And then today we're going to talk about a bit of a practical tool that you can use to help you establish, understand, and perhaps build further onto the leadership style and the skills you already have, because we all have it. Everything that you do in your life, somehow, somewhere, a leadership skill or a style is um, coming through. So something that Marlies and I did last week that was really exciting that we want to chat about today is two very good, very important leadership type assessment tools that are available to us, to you for free. Um, and then we both actually did the assessment and the results was really, really kind of interesting. So I'll start and explain what the two different ones are. And the one is 16 personalities, which is a quite a nice leadership or just a general personality assessment that you can, you can use. You answer a few questions. It took both of us about 10 minutes max to read the answers. I mean, to read through the questions and answer it. And the results were really rather interesting. And it gives you quite a nice variety of different types of results. Sorry, I'm just quickly looking here at my screen because I want to give you guys some feedback. So it gives you your strengths and weaknesses, romantic relationships, friendships, parenthood, career paths, workplace habits. And then it kind of just gives you a conclusion. And what is really nice is it, it, it's actually quite accurate. And it really explains your personality in a really rather interesting way. And it also just gives you a bit of information in terms of how you can use that personality and the specific traits within that personality to your advantage. So that's 16 personalities. And I'm going to pop that into the comments for you guys. So I'm just quickly going to do that while I'm also checking where Marlies is at, because I'm sure she's joining us just now. Then the other personality trait that I, uh, or um, taste that I wanted to chat to you guys about that you might may or may not know of is called DISC. And DISC is very interesting because that also shows you um, how you can build your different personality and how you can then obviously um, see what leadership styles and assessments you have. Marlies is joining now. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> how, how are you? I'm great, thank you. And yourself? I am always good. <laughs> I was just chatting about the fun activity we did last week when we did the two personality assessments and what the results were. Yeah, it was quite interesting. I loved learning a bit about myself. <laughs> I think we all do, right? It's always very interesting. So shall we start with the disc? I think that one is quite interesting. So yes, just definitely, to, yeah. Just to tell everybody what disc stands for is dominance, influence, steadiness, and compliance. So you do a little test. Marlies, it took me about 10 minutes. It took, I think it took about the same for you, hey? Yeah, I was a little bit distracted, I must say. So, <laughs> so it took me a little bit longer um, because I'm a bit of an overthinker in the sense that I overanalyze each question. And <laughs> a lot of the times I was quite torn between two answers. And I really tried to answer this um, very truthfully. So, um, yeah, it took me a bit longer. <laughs> But yeah, it was, it was a very quick test and I'm very pleased because I really feel, um, you know, it really does reflect my personality. Because um, mm. a lot of the times I feel like I can kind of manipulate the test, but this time I really, I wanted an accurate result. So yeah, so it took me a bit longer, but I'm, I'm very pleased. And I'm, yeah, I was, I was super stoked when I actually read my profile. So do you want to share with us what your profile said on the DISC test? Well, it's actually something me and Anandi discussed a while ago, so I, I don't think we were very surprised <laughs> in the sense that, you know, my, my biggest personality out of the, you know, dominance one was dominance. <laughs> um, so, so I have a very, very strong personality. Dominance is 44% and then influence um, was my next, you know, big personality trait. So... Um, with me, with the disc training, um, I like being in control. I like taking control of a situation. Um, and 
leading is is kind of natural to me um and something i need to be very cautious of a lot of the times as well you know kind of mm-hmm. just maybe every now and then stepping back and giving somebody else the opportunity to lead um <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not as, as natural to me as it would be for someone else. So um, that really, that was interesting. Um, and then something I discovered out of it as well, because, okay, well, that's going to be in the second one. Okay, let's leave it for the second one. And yours, <laughs> what, how is your personality, you know, disc profile for you? So interestingly enough, I think you and I scored very, very similarly because I'm a 51 mm. on dominance. And then my next one is also influence. And I think, you know, we, we've chatted about this and kind of touched on this last week as well. When you have two personalities that are A, so similar, especially with a trait like dominance coming through, you expect that those types of people actually will butt heads a lot and they might mm. not be the long. But you and I work really, really well and we found our strengths and we both now play to those strengths. And that's what is the beauty of our partnership. And I think our leadership towards each other, because you lead me as much as I hope I, I lead you. Definitely. And that's what I think is so important. And interestingly enough, in terms of dominance, it means you're very task orientated and active, mm. which I think we both are. And influence is obviously people orientated and active. And again, I think those are three things that we are, are very key on. Like, yeah, us, that's why we're ambassadors. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But it's about getting things done. And I think we, we see this in our work style as well as how we, our leadership style. Being active is very important. And like you said, it, it, it makes you need to think about the fact that sometimes you might have to take a step back and let others lead or let others shine as well. Mm. And then, I mean, people orientated, I guess, speaks for itself because that's why we're yeah. here, like you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no, then, and it's definitely, I think you're spot on there with the leadership. Because um, what I've noticed, we actually, like, I caught myself in this this weekend. Myself and my husband was driving somewhere, you know, in Joburg. And halfway through, I already started, like, doing our goals, planning. And he's like, <laughs> y- y- you realize it's Saturday. Can we just relax? Like, can we talk about the buildings or <laughs> something else <laughs> and and it's it's something that really i think it exhausts other people um in the sense that it's that's for me a conversational topic where it's not necessary for someone else um you know setting goals are you on track are you are you going there um but it's nice knowing that that's your your personality style and i think if you're aware of of that being your personality style you're also a lot of times aware that somebody else might not necessarily share your personality needs and style be so you'll be a bit more um adaptable to other people's personalities and and noticing you know being self-aware it helps you being aware of other people and that they're a bit different and kind of bringing in the balance in that specific relationship whether it's a partnership as we share we both yeah. have a mutual understanding that we're you know very strong personalities very goal oriented so what we did is we made that work for us instead of clashing we said okay let's divide the tasks and you know step into a leadership position and there's a lot of the times i'm sure that you know i i step back and there's a lot of times that i'm sure you step back as well mm-hmm. and giving me kind of the opportunity to to take control and i appreciate that but i think it's because we're so aware of our own personality and of those in our direct circles as well. Absolutely. But I think exactly, you you mentioned such an important point and it's something we kind of chatted about in one of our posts last week in terms of the five skills that a great leader needs. And one of them is awareness. And it's Mm. important to be aware of your team members' skills. And Definitely. sometimes they aren't aware of it or sometimes they underplay it. And I think the, tra- the trait of a great leader or a great team member is to bring that skill out in that person. So exactly like you're saying, sometimes I step back because there's something you just are better at than I am. And I am not, I'm not em- embarrassed to admit that. I think mm. it makes me stronger. You make me stronger. And by letting you shine and me taking a step back, first of all, I'm allowing myself to rest and understand that I don't have to do everything because I have an amazing team member. You feel like I trust you. So you step up Mm. even more. 
And it's just, it's a, like a snowball effect of good things, which I think is very, very important in any kind of relationship, partner, collaboration, um, situation. Yeah, even saying your strengths. Yes, yeah, I agree. Definitely. I definitely. And one of the articles I read as well with that specific, you know, that topic in mind is while I was reading this, I was thinking of like my, my career and when I was working as an employee and I've found myself so many times in a situation where I would challenge an idea um, and I would be obviously out of place because I'm not on the board of directors or the manager, you know, I'm just the employee. Um, but with my personality, I challenge ideas because I do feel whenever I spend time on something, it needs to be efficient and effective. Um, and I don't like spending time on, on tasks that I don't understand how it's going to benefit either the company yeah. or, and, and, what I've noticed is I really feel like, and, and I remember when I, way back when, when I joined the cruise liners, they actually do disc training on all of their employees and they give the whole profile to the management and they actually need to go and study it and allocate yeah. specific tasks to each and every single member. Um, whether it's, you know, ensuring meetings is happening, stock controlling or whatever. And I remember that's the only like work environment, anybody has ever implemented that. And that's the only work environment that I've ever felt before now, obviously, that I've ever felt I'm being utilized for what I'm good at. And yeah. by allowing me to do, or all the employees to, to do what they're good at, and that comes naturally to them. Um, I think a lot of times you, you tend to hire the right employees after that, because the whole thing in a company is all about balance and if if you need to figure out who you have for what specific task and if you need something done do you have an employee that you know kind of fit in that personality profile if mm. they don't they're not going to do it number one they're not going to enjoy doing it so it's become a becoming a problem and they're probably yeah. not going to be great at it either so it becomes a frustration whereas from there if you need to hire or collaborate or partner with someone again um, you know exactly what personality trait you, you're looking for. And I think that's why me and you linked so well from the beginning is because we both knew our personalities and our strengths within our own businesses. And we both knew what we needed to, to form that holistic whole. And that's why we fit in together so well. It's because, you know, your strengths is, is, is my weaknesses, to be honest. And my weaknesses is, is, is your strength. So, you know, we fit in like a puzzle, but we were aware once, you know, our own okay. skill set. And, and the second thing is um, what we needed, what type of personality we needed. And I think if businesses and, and entrepreneurs really try and take this into their companies, it would be so good to form healthy partnerships, whether it's with employees, um, yeah, I really feel like to have a healthy relationship, you need to know each other's personality types and know your strengths and weaknesses and take advantage yeah. of that. Well, I think what is very important is that the fact that you're saying that they, that was the only company you ever, ever experienced that at. I think sometimes some companies don't explore their employees' personalities as deeply. Mm -hmm. I know that... Um, They'll do it for the leadership teams, but sometimes the actual, the, the mid tier managers also need that in order to be able to work with their team. So if, if you feel like doing this for yourself and you want to implement th this with your team, or if there's a specific colleague that you work with a lot, ask them, mm. would they be prepared to take this test with you so that you guys can understand each other a bit better? Um, you know, I'm thinking of the fact that, a few years ago, I was in a position where I had a very challenging colleague that I had to work with. And no matter how much I tried and how much I tried to be aware and I tried to be the better person, things just weren't gelling. And I'm actually thinking mm. now that I consider perhaps asking that person at the time is, would you mind taking this personality test? Because I really want to work on our relationship. And if I can understand you and you can understand me, maybe we can find a middle way. I think perhaps that would have been a conversation that could have driven us towards more success 
Whereas I was the only one trying to be better and work harder at the relationship and things just unfortunately didn't end well. And I think that's sometimes mm. a problem for a lot of people in their positions. And then also perhaps if you are in your own business, a supplier or a client, not that you can always do the personality test with everyone, but yeah. being aware of your traits and your strengths and perhaps things that irk you could help you just in a bit of insight and awareness. Um, and Donna, I see you said you like that test. Um, are you talking about the disc one now? Or because I've I threw, I thrown a few comments into the different ones into the comment sections just for interest sake for everyone. Um, so then I think with that, Marlies, let's go into the 16 personalities, which I found really <laughs> interesting. Loved it. I loved it. But it's the first time I actually did this. This training I did about four times previously. It always actually had the same results though. Um, so yeah, do you, I, I'm curious about your, your six, 16 personalities test. Like what did you take out of it? So funny enough, I've done it before and I had the same answer. Um, so I'm an advocate. So how 16 personalities works is it breaks it up into four main groups. And that's the analyst, the diplomat, the sentinels, and the explorer. Um, and to be very honest, if I had to go into all of these in detail, I, I would be doing it injustice. So I have added the link in the comments for you guys to go and explore. But then my personality type, so then within each, sorry, within each of these four main categories, there's four sub personality types and I'm an advocate which is part of the diplomats which is very mm. interesting because a lot of people tell me that I'm not very diplomatic <laughs> but um when you read when I read it it was very very interesting because one of the main traits of an advocate is inspiring an idealist um, really working hard to help others reach their full potential. And I do feel like that is something that I do. I do try exactly like we chatted now is if I see there's something in you that I think is potential, I will do everything in my power to help you get it out. Sometimes to my own detriment, but um, yeah, I just, I found it very interesting because it's, it goes into um, what they call like intuitive elements your energy elements. Um, so there's, a, there's, there's like a whole breakdown which goes a bit more in depth than the disc personality. And that's why I like 16 personalities so much more. But then what 16 personalities also does is it actually goes, if you look in your results, it goes into your strengths and weaknesses, romantic relationships, friendships, parenthood, career paths, workplace habits. And I think, I mean, that one is quite an interesting one. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I love reading about things and see, oh, okay, that makes, that makes interest. That's interesting. And, and that's what works well. And what, what I found was very, maybe funny. One of my workplace habits is that I have very high demands when I have a work situation. <laughs> and I have a feeling that might be why I work for myself now. <laughs> because, um, I have too high expectations of other people. And I think I sometimes clashed when I had to manage up. And sometimes in our lives, we do have to do that. But I think I was like, you're my manager. I have high expectations of you. <laughs> so I was, I, mine is the exact same, exact same. So I think those are the kinds of things that make it very interesting. And when you look back at situations, you're like, oh, that's why I acted that way. <laughs> So what was your results? Um, yeah, so as I said, I loved, loved, loved this test. And I feel it's so fitted for, you know, our month with the whole focus on personal leadership in every facet of your life. Um, and I'm excited. I actually, I was thinking we should build this into our workshop as well. Let everybody do this test. Um, but what I loved about it, okay, so, so my main, my main, um, personality type is and do not laugh for those who knows me <laughs> because it's a debater <laughs> um i debate about everything to sometimes to everybody's frustration as well so i'm so sorry for that <laughs> clearly it's it's my personality but 
you know what I loved about it? Um, and I say it in the test as well. It's, it, this is the first time I truly felt understood. Um, and I've kind of made peace with it that, you know, my, my way of, of doing things is not necessary. Understand that now, but, but the... Are you still there? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't know what happened. It sounded like you're talking now. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, so, I'm still here. Yeah, I could hear you hear my ears. <laughs> Um, so basically with debater, the nice thing that, you know, I've, I've noticed with this is, um, with my own personality type specifically is I'm also very solution orientated, which has had a massive impact in my life. Um, personality wise, relationship wise, work wise, um, because a lot of the times, even with colleagues or with my family members, um, or in my relationship, someone would come to me with a specific problem um, mm. and trying to discuss that problem. And I'm a bit of a solution seeker. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, yeah, so I would always try, you know, I like a challenge. I, I'll take a challenge and I'll try and get a solution as quick as possible. But something they said here, which, and I'm so glad, you know, I read that, is I'm not very good at connecting emotionally. Mm -hmm. with anybody that has a specific problem because when you whenever you come to me with a problem I do not hear your emotions at all um I skip over that part and I hear a problem and my main my brain goes on solutions immediately um and I actually had a like a conversation about this yesterday while we were having our Sunday afternoon pry as um a, fr a very good friend of mine actually went on, on management training and one of, he has a very similar traits, personality trait than me. And one of the skills he learned with this specific thing is, you know, step back. Mm. You, you, once, number one, you need to be aware. So I'm aware of this now. I'm aware that yeah. this is my personality type. So be aware. Secondly, step back, listen to what they're saying don't think of solutions, really try and be present and actively listening to what they're saying. Then you tell them, okay, I heard you. Let me chew on this for a day. Because my mind would immediately bring out solutions and then I would get frustrated if they just continue babbling on about this problem after <laughs> I've given them a solution. Meantime, it's all about just hearing the emotions, not the problem. I'm not great at that. So I know that now, mental notes. So, you know, take a step back, listen to what they're saying, listen to the emotions. And then 24 hours after you've spoken, you just go to that person, you discuss what you talked about, and then you provide them with a solution because then they at least feel like you truly listen to them. And I think this is the biggest thing I took out of this test is because it's become such a problem for me personally. Um, yeah. And people getting frustrated with me because I'll try and discuss something and I'm like, you know, solution, solution, solution is, is knowing my personality type and how to manage it in, in, in your personal life and in work life. And I'm the exact same. I'm, I'm going to challenge you with your ideas and especially if it's, I really don't see the sense in it or if I can't see it actually, you know, providing us with results. And I had a lot of problems with this with, you know, my managers and leaders in the past because um, I would be a bit out of place. But it's all about how you handle that situation, how you word it, what you say. Um, and knowing that this is part of my personality um, this is also actually a strength, not just a weakness. Yeah. So in some situa situations, it would be a weakness, but I think you need to know that in order to, you know, manage it correctly, um, going into that conversation the right way um, and saying, I hear you, I, I, th I can see where you're coming from. I just have a few questions regarding your idea um, that's going to help me implement this better. Not challenging them in the sense that I really don't think it's going to work, but, you know, just rewording it and saying, listen, I, I have a few ideas. 
Um, I have a few questions as well. I need to implement this. I really need to understand where you're coming from. So, like, do you mind, you know, walking through these, you know, talking points? Let's say talking points. And not I think we lost you there for a second. Am I back? You are back. <laughs> yeah, so... Okay, brilliant. So, so yeah, so not necessarily sit and debate about a specific topic, but being aware that I am a debater, I want to see the pros and cons and different sides of every situation in order to, to make an um, informative de decision on that specific topic. So, but, you know, just approaching it correctly and not ending up in a debate. <laughs> necessarily so so yeah I, I really i truly love this test and it gave me awesome advice for my romantic relationship so <laughs> super excited to to be self-aware in every single facet of my life and just actually implementing it and um especially with the relationship with me and my parents and me and my sister and mm -hmm. myself and my husband um, and me and my co-workers and partners it's it's brilliant knowing who you are where you are yeah. Um, as well as with your partner, so that you can obviously play to each other's strengths, you know when to step back, and whenever I would communicate with you, you'll know. I'm a debater, naturally, so I'm not challenging you, I'm challenging the idea and seeing if there's yeah. a better alternative to that specific idea. Um, but now I understand that for the first time ever. That's amazing. Really. <laughs> I think I think, and Lloyd actually just made a comment. She said that she, she struggles with the test because she doesn't want to behave in a specific way to be that type. But then Donna, I like your, 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 your response where you said it's just a confirmation in terms of perhaps knowing that this is a trait that you have and kind of just putting it into words. I think we are all still unique. We're also going to approach how we do things in a specific way, but sometimes just putting I don't want to say a bucket or I don't want to, you know, I don't want to box it like that, but I think sometimes just to put a word or a phrase to something that we do that some could potentially frustrate us helps us because if you understand, Oh, I do this. Why do I always do this? But if you understand that it's part of your personality and it's part of a bigger trait, like you tend to, overthink questions my Liz, but now you know it's mm. because you're an analyst or a debater now you can work on that i think so i mean i do sometimes feel like you have these personality tests and it's like four answers for billions of people and you know how accurate could that be but i do think at the same time if you get a really good test a good assessment it can help you so much just to identify Exactly like you say, Donna, confer, identify and confirm the certain elements of your personality and work on the good things, but then also know where to work on the bad things, which I think is always helpful. And exactly like you say, Marlies, that awareness, I think, is the biggest thing that helps us as, as women, as partners, as business owners, you know, all elements of life. And, and interesting enough that you say about your personal relationship, I made my husband do the test too. And I think we're quite different. We scored almost exactly the same, which wow. was very, very interesting. But also, again, when we looked at it, we realized that the way he does it and the way I do it is different, but it comes down to the reason why we're doing it is exactly the same. And we actually Ooh. like, we're like, oh, okay, cool. So that's why you're always so annoying because you're actually yeah. the same as me. <laughs> I think, I think um, my husband hasn't done the test yet. I think he's a bit scared seeing my results <laughs> on my test. Um, but it just, it once again grounded me. Sorry if I look a bit distracted. I don't know what's going on with the video because it's like playing catch up in my ears. So oh. I have two conversations going on with you <laughs> currently. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with that specific test, it just, it talks about, I, I want to open it here because it talks about your romantic relationship, your friend's mm -hmm. relationship, parenthood, which, which was awesome because I have a two-year-old and everything was so spot on and career paths, workplace habits, and then obviously your conclusion of everything. Yeah. And it was awesome knowing, okay, this, it, 
I must say, this is probably the test that's been the most spot on to how I truly, truly feel inside that I've ever, ever done. And for my partner reading it, he understood why I need specific things because it's part of my personality. It's, 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 that's what kind of fills my cup, if I can say it like that. That's, that's what I need. That gives me a high. That gives me energy. Um, and being self-aware, knowing, okay, as a parent, I need this. As a coworker, I need this. As um, an entrepreneur, this is all my flaws that I need to work on. Or whenever, because I have, you know, I have a whole team that I work with. So whenever I work with my team, this is who I am, but this is also who they are. So when I yeah. speak to, you know, my designer, for instance, I'm going to speak to them way different than I would chat to my ads creator. Yeah. Um, and I need to know their personalities in order for me to translate a specific idea correctly so that they understand it. Um, and I need to know what makes them tick. I need to know... You know, this one loves getting solutions. Like if any of my previous managers took advantage of the fact that I enjoy getting solutions to problems, like what business don't need that? <laughs> I love it. I love creating systems and, and, you know, seeing where, you know, all the cracks is in a business and filling it. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 you need to be self-aware and you need to know, okay, this is your strength. This is your weaknesses. This is everybody in your direct, you know, day-to-day -day life, their weaknesses, their strengths. And this is how you're going to be partnering or working together, whether it's an employee under you, under you, whether it's your mom, your dad, your partner, your children. This is something funny enough that my dad has always done. I think we're very similar in a sense that he's always made us do this personality test from high school hmm. and we also knew what their personalities was um, and I really think it helped me it shaped me in my relationship with them and it helped them understood why certain things is more important to me yeah. and you know what's the brilliant part is they've always incentivized us <laughs> on our personalities to get you know tasks done or jobs done oh, wow. And that is managing done right. I love Knowing that. Knowing everybody's personality. And you I mean, I mean, this is like a, you know, dad and daughter type of relationship. Yeah. This is not even us in a workspace. So if you can take that mindset into your household, you can take it into your corporate industry. You can take it even with your clients. Whenever you sit with clients, you need to know who you're talking to. Are you talking to the decision maker? Are you talking to the... Um, influencer, who are you chatting? Because then you know what points to discuss with them that's going to obviously make or break that sale. So it's, it's vital in every facet of your life, basically. No, absolutely. And I think it definitely, all of this, once you're aware and once you know all these things, it leads into another important leadership skills, which is uh, communication, because it is going to help you to communicate more effectively. And even though if you're sitting with your client, I mean, realistically, I guess you can't get all of your clients to do the tests. But if you are aware of what you are like and what your triggers are and you, throughout the conversation, you can pick up on certain things. You can pick up on body language. You can pick up on facial expressions and you can see, okay, maybe my, my diplomat is being too diplomatic. Maybe I need to be a bit harsher. Or maybe my, maybe my debater is being too strong right now. And maybe I need to be softer. And that's going to help mm. you definitely be more effective in communication. And if you, mm. exactly like you say, if you know that you're talking with the decision maker, it's going to, it's, your strategy is going to be a little bit different versus somebody that still needs to be the messenger. So you'll have Precise. to be more clear, you need to be more concise. Are you giving them additional information that they can take back to the decision maker in order to make the decision be made more quicker or as effectively mm -hmm. as possible? And I love that you say that about the family because I think, you know, sometimes when people have certain family styles, um, especially if you're a strong woman, it's seen as, oh, you're just being a boss at home as well. But I do think there's so much to say for leading your family, but leading with your husband and leading with your children, 
because you're building strong leaders from a younger age as well. You're yeah. helping them to understand who they are. You're helping them to be more aware as well as communicate, which can only benefit them in their futures and their lives. So I think that's what we said. Leadership is not just when you are a leader in a specific role in your career. Leadership capabilities comes through in all elements of life. And um, something I read that, um, you know, felt very interesting to me is um, there's an article that says, in essence, there's kind of like four fundamental leadership styles. And that is pragmatic, which are driven, competitive, um, and they're all about hitting goals above all else. Then you have idealists who want to learn and grow, and they want everyone else on the team to do the same. Then you have stewards. They are dependable, they're loyal, they're helpful. And they provide the stabilizing and calm force for everyone else to excel. And then diplomats for the affiliative force that keeps groups together and typically builds the personal bonds with their employees. Um, no problem. Cheers, Donna. We'll chat to you soon. Donna's just saying you have to yeah. jump off. Happy Monday to you, Donna. Thank you. Um, but I think those four points are actually very like it makes sense in my head because all of these different leadership styles, all of these different personalities can kind of fall under that. And if you know you are tend to be more of an idealist, then you need to know that you need to, perhaps if you're in a leadership position, try and strengthen your realistic or your, your pragmatist element within yourself or if you have somebody on your team that has that, make sure that you're bringing that out so that your team can really function to the best of their abilities. Um, or hire correctly so that you have at least yes. each of, you know, every single type of leadership to yes. have a holistic balance. I think if, you know, you have this type of leader and this type of leader, then you know when you're hiring again or upscaling, this is what your business needs. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to copy this and pop it into our, our comments here as well. I love it. To read that. Um, but I, I think it's such a good point. And I think there's so many elements of, of leadership styles that is forgotten or not thought about in, in our communities, in our business places. And, but they all have such a huge impact. And that's really why I think our event this month is so, for us, I think, is vital to attend because we're going to talk about all these things. And I think, What's also important is a lot of people have, doubt, have started doubting themselves. They have mm. become, uh, they've, they, they're feeling vulnerable. They're feeling a little bit maybe lost, a little bit frustrated. And if this is you, I think, you know, join our event. Let's help you find your inner leader again, because that's mm. really going to help you take action on your day to day, take action in your life, your relationships, your career or your job. Uh, that's the same thing or your business <laughs> um because we know what it feels like we've also been through the last few months and marlies you and i have both said we've had bad days and we are lucky enough that we've had each other and as well mm. as our other partnerships and relationships in our life but not everybody has that they are maybe the strong person in their circle and then who do mm. they have to help them stand up stronger and and get their confidence and their skill set and their happiness backs if you can say it like that so yeah and it's really just about about taking control of who you are as a person um and and knowing your strengths your weaknesses and whoever whatever facet you're going to incorporate this workshop for me um i incorporate everything on every single level whether it's my relationship with my sister my my little one my husband my colleagues you our you know our our audiences is is taking personal responsibility of your own life is taking leadership of your own life and where you're going and i'm so passionate about this because um i've seen what what a huge difference it made in my life and i just i really i i'm passionate about this and i really feel like stop holding yourself back in life because you can achieve everything you dream of. I've lived it. Um, and I'm actually doing it. So now because if you're yeah. stop stop sitting back and complaining about what, you know, negative aspects are in your life because you've actually kind of pulled it into your life, let's face it. 
Um, so take control of your life. Take control of where you are. Take control of where you want to be. Yeah. Um, and now knowing how to, you know, your strengths, your weaknesses, what skills do you need to, to learn to get to where you want to be in life, whether it's career-wise, personality-wise, or whatever. And, and just knowing it's okay if you're a strong woman at home. I am. Yeah. And you know what? My husband plays all of my best feature to his advantage. And we're both very successful in that purely because we both thrive as individuals separately first. And then we thrive as a partnership, as a whole, yeah. as a household. And you need to take control of your own life and your own destiny. And only by doing that, you're going to be happy. You're going to be able to bring to the table what you need to bring to the table in your personal relationship and as well as your role as a parent or as yeah. a daughter. And since I've made that shift in my life, I can't tell you what difference it made in all of my relationships because I don't sit back and complain anymore about, oh, life is so unfair or I don't, you know, do what I want to do and there's no time. You know, I'm... I study full-time, I have a little one, I run my own business, I'm a future females ambassador with Anandi. My plate is full, but it's full with the right type of stuff and not the yes. wrong stuff. And, it's, oh, and, it's, and I'm going to keep it like that because I know where I'm going, I know what I need to get there, I know what my strengths and my weaknesses is. And this is getting back to the workshop, exactly what we're going to be working through on the workshop, is where are you, where you want to go, um, what do you need skills wise and what does your personality already offer you that you can build on? You don't yeah. have to always start, you know, from the beginning on a clean slide. You already have strength oh, within so your personality that you need to utilize and you need to capitalize on that specifically. Um, and knowing that, I mean, even with you and me talking about products and what we can offer to our our audiences is basically that is whatever I am good at and you are good at yeah. we turn that into a package because you know what somebody else has a different personality type and they don't have that within their business or they haven't ha hired someone so yes. they contract us out to literally go and do what we're good at Absolutely, and that's awesome yeah. and knowing that about yourself it's going to open up so many different doors throughout your life so <laughs> yeah as you can see I'm passionate about this so let me stop there <laughs> no absolutely I think we feel the same and, and we're so excited for this um our event this month the workshop we're working on the workbook I mean at like Marilise and I have been working on it this weekend. We're working on it today and tomorrow. We're going to make sure it's ready for you guys for Thursday evening. And with that, we're actually giving you some accountability steps so you can check in with yourself. Make sure you're taking action from the workshop and make sure that you're keeping yourself accountable because we all know that only action can lead to success. And with small, simple things that you implement every day, you can move forward and you can build that momentum and you can become mm. the leader of your own life, basically. <laughs> very, very true. Yeah, take Perfect. control, guys. Don't let other people, you know, take control of your life. Take control of your own life and make sure that you end it the way you want to end it. And be happy. It's awesome. We're all alive. We're all healthy. Um, you know, we have so much to be grateful for. So take control of your own life. See where you want to be, where you're at, and what you need to do. Um, to get to where you want to be. Absolutely. So I'm going to pop a link to the event in the comment section again. If you haven't yet got your tickets, please go and grab them. We are going to run out of seats soon because we want mm. to give attention to everybody individually. We want to make sure that we can help you and support you in the best way possible. I'm also going to pop a link in the comments about just a feedback form um, that you can fill in for us. It's anonymous. And just give us your feedback. What do you want from workshops? What do you want to learn about and where do you see success lying for you to attend and invest in your time um, with us? We want to give you the best possible workshops, the best experiences. And so we'd love for you to fill that in. So I'm going to pop the, both of those links in the comments. We look forward to seeing you on Thursday. We look forward to taking action with you. Marlies, is there anything else you want to chat about before we end off today? <laughs> No, I don't think I'd need to go into this topic because you're not going to be able to stop me. <laughs> no, 
So yeah, just really, I, I feel like I just really want to emphasize the fact that you're in control of your own life. So make sure that you're happy with the life that you're currently living or the one that you're going to be living for the next mm-hmm. five to 10 years. Um, if you're not, if there's anything that you either you, you want to incorporate, you want to travel more, you want to work for yourself, you want to have a different type of lifestyle, I would definitely recommend this workshop because it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you the tools. It's given us the tools to actually implement that. And we've both been living our dream lifestyle for the past year. And yeah. we'll be able, to hopefully, to do it for, for longer as well. And I really want everybody else to be able to do that as well because it's such a great feeling. Um, so take control. And the, obviously, step one would be to, to learn how to do that. And we're sharing that with you guys. Um, we're sharing our tools that help us to get to where we are currently. So, yeah, that's it. Great. Thank you so much, Marlies. Thank you for your time this morning. I always love chatting to you. you. (laughs) I hope you guys enjoyed our chat again today. And we'll be here again next week because we want to give you guys value and share our insights and experiences with you. Um, And we hope that you guys find what we talk about interesting. Um, Based on the comments today, I think you guys did. (laughs) And other than that, have a great Monday and we'll see you soon. Bye. Cheers. Enjoy your week. Bye.